Installing Windows updates every month is just the worst. And then there's the maintenance windows. You've got to come in on nights and weekends for that so you don't impact any of the users. I quit and I couldn't be happier. And you should quit too. And you want to know something? When you do, your VMs will be more secure and they won't need any troubleshooting, which is going to make your life really easy. And all you need to do to start living the dream is recycle. Now here's my host pool, and I've got a ton of VMs. Back in my patching days, this would have taken all night or longer to patch and reboot all these hosts by hand. But now they'll all be up to date with no time at all. No reboots and no impacting users. And we'll be reusing the same AD objects and identities, and you're not going to need to babysit it either. Now the AVD team is introducing a new concept called host configurations. Now each pool will have a config that tells it how every host in that pool should be built. And we'll be combining the power of that new config with a different approach to administering all of our VMs. Stop treating them like pets. Don't patch them, don't fix them. They're completely disposable. Just think about it. All your user data is in your FSLogix profiles. The apps are either baked into your image or they're sideloaded through something like AppAttach. And there isn't anything then on the VMs that you need to patch, protect, or troubleshoot. Just build new hosts and throw the old broken ones away. Now, I bet you're worried about all the extra steps involved. Things like cleaning up the old Active Directory computer objects, deleting the VMs, disks, NICs, Elver, and Azure resource groups, removing the old session hosts out of the host pool, and then if your VMs were cloud joined, you've also got to remove them out of Entra ID devices, Intune, and any other management tools that you were using. And you would be 100% right. But if we recycle, then we don't have to do any of those things. Which also means any change in that configuration, like picking a updated OS image that has your patches already in it, will trigger all the hosts in the pool to automatically get updated. Which means no more patching ever. And it also means that building additional hosts will be ridiculously simple. Now, just two more things to understand before we jump into the portal. Now, this configuration update is not a breaking change in ABD. All your current pools will continue to work as always, which also means if you want to use this new feature, you're going to need to deploy a new host pool. And to do that, you're going to need a couple things. First, an Azure Key Vault. This will be where we store the local admin and domain join credentials. Second, we need the AVD service to have some additional permissions in your subscription so it has the rights to build hosts on your behalf. And third, we're going to need an updated image. Now over in the Azure portal, go to your subscriptions, and then over here you want to go to Access Control and add a new role assignment. Search for the Desktop Virtualization Virtual Machine Contributor, and then click Next. Click over here and add your member, and that's going to be the Azure Virtual Desktop Service, and it should have an app ID like this one. Then complete the assignment. Next, you want to create a Key Vault in the same subscription if you don't already have one. Then you go to the Key Vault's Access Configuration Blade. Make sure it's set to Azure Role-Based Access Control, and make sure that you also have the Template Deployment box checked. Then go to Access Control, add a new role assignment, and search for Secret User. And on the next screen, select your member as Azure Virtual Desktop, like we did before, and then Create. Next, back in our Key Vault, you want to go to the Secrets on the left and generate a new secret. Now, we're going to need secrets for the username and a different secret for the passwords for your local and domain join permissions. So, just give it a name, and then for the value on our local admin username, put the actual name of your admin. And remember, you still have to follow Azure's basic requirements, so you can't use something like Administrator. Then do the same thing and create for your password. And if you're using a traditional AD join or hybrid join, you're going to need to add secrets for the domain join aspects of that as well. Oh, and speaking of domain join, it's a best practice to automate domain joins using a service account. And since we're going to be recycling the AD computer objects, the AD join account will need some extra AD permissions for this to work. And that would be the reset passwords, validate write to DNS host name and service principal names, and then the read write for account restriction, and also you'll need computer uh, create and delete objects. Over here in the AVD portal, build a new pool, assign your subscription, resource group, name, and region like always, 
And since this is currently a preview feature, turn on the validation environment. Then pick if you want to be using desktops or remote apps in this pool. And then we have at the bottom here a new host pool type. Now there's nothing new here for personal pools yet, but when you select pooled, now you have the option to manage your VMs and their updates yourself or the new configuration approach. And that's what I want. Set the load balancing and the max session host as always and click next. We've got the number of hosts that you want to build and it's perfectly okay by the way to just choose zero because this whole experience is more about creating the configuration than it is about building the host that comes after the configuration is done. So the next thing on the list is the prefix for all your hosts and then the availability options, which should always be to use as many zones as possible. And then you pick your security type. Now for the image, there are of course several Microsoft images that you can pick from, or you could click over here and go to your own custom images. And we'll even talk about how the whole end-to-end -end process for this works right after this. Then select the VM size that's good for your workload. As for the disk type, I always suggest using premium SSDs for pooled host pools. After that, you pick your network and subnet, which brings us to the join type. Now, if you're doing AD or hybrid join, you're gonna need to provide those four key vault secrets for the domain side and the local admin side. But if you're using the Entra cloud join, you just need the local admin secrets. On the workspace tab, you can select an existing one if you have it or just create a new one. And then on the advanced tab, you should be always checking this box to enable diagnostics, even if you aren't planning on using the AVD monitoring solution. That's because we'll still be sending all those logs to the right destination so that you can do whatever you need to with them. Finally, add your tags and then review and create. Now your brand new pool is just a little bit different. Over here, you can see that you are using the new session host config, and right under that, you can click here to see what that config is. And at the top, you still have your global controls for the pool to start and stop and restart all the VMs, but notice the registration key is gone. And I'll show you the new way to add hosts in just a second. Over in the properties blade, you also have the management type, but notice you cannot change it. And you have another link here for the host configuration, and at the bottom, you can set your max session limit for each individual host and change the load balancer type. And at the top, you can download the ARM template for the pool, which will include your new host configuration. Over in the session host blade, there's a couple more changes. When you click the manage host pool configuration at the top, you can view the config again and you can edit it. And remember, any changes you make to the config will trigger the recycling of all the hosts. Next, you've got a count of all the hosts in the pool, and you can set a batch size. Now, this is the number of hosts that will all be updated at the same time. Now, here's a secret on how all of this really works. No matter how large of a batch you create, the very first run of the batch will be for one host only. Once that single host goes through the entire process successfully, then the next batches will kick off with the number that you're asking for. And that'll all just make sure that everything happens flawlessly. And at the bottom, we have the number of hosts that'll remain online while the other batches are all running. And the session host tab here is just like the build process that we've walked through before. And the thing you'll probably change most often is what image you're using. But you could change anything else you need to, like the size of the VMs or the disks. On the scheduled tab, you can either run this right now or pick a maintenance window in the future down to the hour, kind of like a set it and forget it. Over in the notifications, you can decide how long any active users would have to finish their sessions and get signed out. And you also have the console message that they'll see. Then just review everything and kick off whatever it is you're doing. Now you'll see this new banner at the top here that'll show the percentage of progress for the batch. And remember, since the first batch is just one system, this is gonna stay zero until that one is complete. And you can also look back at your config and see all the changes that you asked for right away. Once it's done, the banner will change again, letting you know everything was just successful. And if you chose to save your original OS disks, they'll be right where you left them in the resource group, along with the new updated OS disks already attached to your recycled hosts. Now, what if we don't need to make a change to the pool, we just need to add additional hosts? Well, for that, you can just click add. 
And then all you need to do is tell it the number of new hosts that you want to build. And they're gonna get built based on your configuration file. So this could not possibly be simpler. Now the last thing to show you in this video is the entire end-to-end -end process during a patching cycle. Now if you're using a Microsoft provided image, you'll just need to add that into your new configuration, but I wanna show you how to do this with a custom image. So after Patch Tuesday, I'm gonna open my AVD custom image templates. I'm gonna add a new template and browse, base it on last month's existing template, then give it a name for this month. Then on the source image tab, I'm gonna select last month's image. And for the destination, I'm gonna set the image definition and create a new image version, which will reference that it's from this month. And I'll add that to as the output name. And then I click next. And since you already ran this process last month, we probably don't need to make any changes to the build properties. So we'll just click next again, and you can set whatever additional configuration changes you need to, but the most important thing is that Windows Update is here. That way, when the VM gets deployed, it'll pull down all the latest patches and pack them into the image for you automatically. And once that new image template is complete, you just check the box and hit build at the top. And when you come back later, you'll have a new updated image version. Then we can go back to our host pool and to the session host, click to edit our config at the top, set the batch size as you need to for your number of VMs, and then on the session host tab, pick that new image as your latest image, and then set your schedule as you need to, as well as your notifications, and then sit back and wait for the magic of recycling to work for you. Now, of course, you won't be able to do all this cool stuff unless you know how this works. And happy learning.